Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Tech video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you on how you can make your very own camera command inside of Roblox. Before we get started, I'm going to head inside of Roblox Studio where I'll give you a quick example on how this system works. Now that we're inside of Roblox, you can see when we run the camera command, our camera will be set to the part, and then when we run our camera command again, the camera is set back to our player. Now I'm going to go over to Roblox Studio where I'll teach you on how you can make this for yourself. Before we get started, keep in mind all source code used in today's tutorial can be found in the description down below. Now that we're inside of Roblox Studio, we're going to have to start off by customizing our explorer. First things first, we're going to have to create some scripts. The first script belongs in started UI and then this is going to be a local script. This will be the script that handles moving the camera around for the player. We can call this script camera script. Once we've done that, we can create another script inside of server script service. And this will be the script that handles when commands come in. So we can call this camera commands. The final thing we need to do is create a remote event inside of replicated storage. This will allow the server and client to communicate. And then the final thing we need to do in Explorer is create a rem and then the final thing we need to do inside of our Explorer is create a remote event called cutscene. Once that's all done, you're going to have to head down to your local script. And then we're going to start off as usual by defining a few variables. So first of all, we're going to have to define our player. To do this, we can say local player equal game.players.local player. Now we need to create a camera that our player can move their current camera to. So it sounds a bit complicated, but it's pretty simple. To make life a lot easier, we're going to create a part that is essentially going to temporarily be our camera for the player. So let's head back to our workspace, and then we're going to create a brand new part, and then we're going to call this part cam. Make sure you don't call it camera or anything like that, as it may interfere with the current camera. As you can see, we already have a camera inside of workspace, so make sure you don't call it camera again. So for this instance, I'm just going to call it cam. And then you can see we have our part here. And now you need to move your camera to a position of your choice. Now to make sure you know which face of the camera the player is going to be looking out of, there is a little trick you can use. So if you click on plus next to your part and create a surface GUI, then make sure that the face is set to front and then add a frame inside of the surface GUI, you can see the part that the camera will be facing. So for example, if we use the camera command, the player would be looking that way. And now I'm going to move this part to a position of my choice. And now I'm done moving my camera. I know my camera will be facing the spawn. As you can see, we have that little marker to indicate that the camera will be facing that spawn. And then to make sure everything's ready, you just remove the surface GUI. You make sure your camera is anchored. If your camera ever looks like it's in the ground, it normally means it's unanchored. So make sure it's anchored. And then finally, make sure you set your transparency to one, and this will make sure people can't see your camera. Now we can head back to our script where we'll continue with scripting. Next, we're going to have to define the camera that is the current player's camera. So it's not going to be the camera we just created, it's going to be local camera equals and then game.workspace.camera. So make sure it's not the cam that we just created, but it's the camera. Now we've already created the remote event, which will allow our server to communicate with us, the client. However, we need to work out when the remote event is actually fired. So we can say game.replicatedStorage.cutscene the on client event so when the server fires this function so when the server fires this remote event connect function and then start and then this is going to be our parameter that a server can pass down and now what we're going to do is as you can see in the beginning we had a bit of a toggle so you could run the command twice and that would uncam the user and cam the user so we're going to use a little trick to detect whether the user is trying to be cammed so put in the camera's view, or returned, returned back to the player. And a simple way we can do this is by using a boolean. 
So we can say if start equals true, then so if the camera is trying to be moved to the player, and now we're going to have to do a bit of camera interpolation. So we need to set the camera type to be scriptable. And as you know, we've already defined our camera above. So we can say camera.camera type equals, and then this may be a little bit tricky, so make sure you spelt it all right, create a string, and then inside of it, type scriptable, just like I do on screen. And then what we need to do is we need to set the camera to be in the position of the camera we created earlier on. So to do this, to do this we can use C frame. So I'll just drop a line and then say camera.cframe, just like I do it here, equals game.workspace.cam.cframe. You see I made a mistake there and used camera. Make sure you're doing the cam. Now we've done that, we're going to handle when the player wants to have the camera return to them. So we can say else and then camera dot camera subject and this means the camera subject will be set to a specific subject and for this instance we're going to be using the player dot character dot humanoid then we need to set the camera type back to custom so we can do that by saying camera dot camera type equals custom just like how I did it on screen and then finally we need to set the C frame of the camera and to do that we can say camera dot C frame equals player dot character dot head make sure you use a capital H dot C F frame and now that's all of our client down so that means if we were to fire our cutscene it would either set the camera to be looking at the player or it would be set as the camera's specific view now we're going to have to work on the script that handles when a command comes in so it shouldn't be too difficult however you do have to pay attention so we're going to double click on our script and then we're going to start off by defining a few variables just like we did before and then we're going to say local group id equals i'm just going to set it to zero for now and then we're going to say local min rank equals zero now make sure you follow my tutorial on how to get your group id and what a min rank is if you look in the top right of your screen right now you'll see a little card that links to that video and make sure you fill that out. For now, I'm going to keep it on zero, but I'd highly recommend you watch that video if you want to learn what the min rank is and how a group ID works. Next, we're going to have to define a prefix. Now, the prefix is often a symbol that goes before the command. Normally, people use colons or exclamation marks. However, I'm going to use an exclamation mark today. So we can say local prefix equals, and then make a string, and then just put exclamation mark or whichever you want to be your prefix. Now we're going to have to make the actual command that will trigger the event. So we can say local command equals, and for now I'm going to set it to cam. However, you can set this to whatever you want your command to be. So for example, you could have it camera, and then it'd be exclamation mark camera. However, this is completely down to personal preference. Now, as you remember, we had that toggle system, and then we're going to be using a variable to state whether the toggle should be on or off. Now, you may not quite grasp this at the moment, but I think once we've got it, you'll understand it. So what you have to say is local camera online equals false. And now we need to detect when the chat message is ran. And then after that, we're going to have to make sure that the chat message, what is ran, is the command that we defined above. So to detect when a player sends a message, we need to detect when they join. So we can say added connect function and then we're going to get the player that joined and now what we need to do is we need to get the player's rank in the group id that we defined above so we're going to say if player get rank in group group id and then we're going to use the if bigger or equals than operator min rank then and now we're checking if the player is the minimum rank or above the minimum rank, we now need to check if they're chatted and now we need to get their messages. So we're going to have to say player.chatted connect function and now we're going to get the message that they just chatted and then this will run every time they send a message. So now we need to make sure that message is the command because we don't want them to always set off the camera if they're just speaking normally. So we can say if message is equals equals, so if it is 
prefix and now we're going to concatenate the prefix and the command so if you don't know what that means it just means it will join the strings together and then we're going to say dot dot to concatenate it and then we're going to say command then so if the message is equivalent to the command and the prefix now we need to use our toggle system so we're going to say if camera online equals false then and now we want our camera to be online so we're going to say game.replicatedStorage.cutscene fire all clients true and now this will set the camera to be on so the player's camera will be moving from them to the camera we created and then we need to say camera online equals true so now it's telling the script that the camera is online and now we need to say else so if the camera isn't online game.replicatedStorage.cutscene fire all clients false and that will tell the script the local script we created earlier on to move the camera back to the player and then we simply need to say camera online equals false because it's not online anymore and believe it or not that's this entire system all done and ready to go so the most important part of creating a script is debugging and making sure everything works so i'm going to click on the play button And then to test it, I'm going to run the camera command. Okay, it looks like we have an issue, so let's press F9. Cam is not a valid member of Workspace Workspace. Oh, it looks like I accidentally didn't make this capital. So in my script, I'm calling the cam with a uppercase first letter. However, I defined it as a camera with a lowercase letter. So to fix everything, I'm just going to rename this cam, but make sure it has a capital C this time. And now let's run it again, make sure everything works. And then when I run the camera command, oops, I accidentally put a capital there. What? Aha, it looks like I made another mistake now. So let's just head back. And so I accidentally said C frame, but I accidentally had a lowercase f. So let's just check if we go to our output. Inside, it's on line 7 inside of local script. Let's go down to line 7. And yep, I made a silly mistake. I accidentally made the f as a lowercase. And now let's publish that. I'm just going to call this camera commands. I'm using this so I can save my work. So if I go offline or anything, everything is nice and ready and saved. And then let's close. And now let's run the script and make sure everything works. And now if we run our camera command, okay, the camera is set and you can see it is slightly diagonal to the spawn like I intended it to be. And now let's try one more time. If I run the command again, it's returned to the player. So everything's working just how we want it to work. And I would call this a success today. So so thank you for tuning in to today's video, if you have any issues with any scripts or you're interested in Roblox and want to chat with the rest of the Cookie Deck community, head to forms.thecookie.dev, that's all from me, thank you for tuning in and bye bye.